The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 11th, the Masters Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. And in the tiger's den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show right now. Indices basically in the red. Dow's off 42. S&P's off one and a half. The Nasdaq down seven. The Russell, though, is flat. It's up 26 cents. You've got the transports up uh, 83 buckaroonies, and the semis are up four. Other than that, the New York Stock Exchange off 14. Composite down seven. Wilshire off five. Spot volatility index is down 16 pennies. That's trading at 13.14. Well below its 50-day exponential moving average. Off 17 bucks right now is uh, Goldilocks. She's trading at 12.96. We'll certainly take a look at that. Lightspeed crude off one and six tenths percent. That's off a buck. Leading the charge. The upside. Booking holdings dollar-wise up 12 and change. Granger WW up six or two percent. Netflix up six or one and a half percent to the downside is intercept pharmaceuticals down by 13 and a half percent 16 buckaroonies madrigal pharmaceuticals off 12 regenerin down 11 chipotle off nine so we've got some movers and shakers of course i want to look at what you want to uh, look at out there and so the first request was really to look at gold what's gold doing so if we go take a look at gold here let's switch over to this chart uh, what you're going to see, I'll go ahead and expand this out. This is the daily time frame we're looking at. We're looking at a uh, bar chart out here. And uh, what you're noticing is what gold has done thus far, uh, the low is 1296.80. The top, or, I apologize, the bottom of the weekly box is 1295.10. Bottom of the daily, 1293.60. There becomes your key level of support. Thus far, what we have seen is a pullback to an area of support inside of Goldilocks. That is what the daily and the weekly time, well, that's the daily and weekly profiles tell us. This is the daily time frame chart out here. Uh, if I look at the five-hour time frame, uh, there's not anything here to identify a bottom out there. So uh, this would say, if we were just going to rely upon this, that gold would move lower. But you and I know that there's support based on the daily and weekly time frame, so we're going to stick with that. If we switch to, we size down by 10, that means go to a 30-minute time frame chart for gold. Here's what we're going to see right now. Now, as of 1 o'clock, as really as of 1230, well, first of all, let's, let's take a step back, because you and I use a handful of tools and patterns to help us identify when markets uh, may be making tops or bottoms, um, when they're traveling down to support or heading up to resistance. Um, and uh, so if we take a look at when the high 
came in here. This is a 30-minute chart here for gold. You're going to see that occurred at 13.30 or 1.30 in the afternoon yesterday. When it was doing that, it was completing a Tommy DeMarc setup nine count, nine consecutive closes above the close of the bar for bars earlier. I know that's a mouthful. I just try to make sure, and I really focus. I concentrate to make sure that I say that correctly, uh, and, I, and I did. So uh, pat on the back. But now if we take a look at the gold moving lower, we can also see that it's been doing it with less relative energy. And here at 12 noon, prices moving lower, doing less less relative energy and formed a hammer candle indicating that it is trying to bottom on this 30 minute time frame price did continue moving lower but closed back above that hammer candle at 1230 um, it was a close call here at one slightly underneath that hammer candle out here uh, so but what we and we could see a little uh, at 1 we could see another bullish reversal signal bullish uh, uh, engulfing candle the key here will be as we can see is going to be Stevie's red line you can see how that is contained price so if gold is to buy Bottom. What you will see is a close above Stevie's red line. That level, by the way, as we speak right now, is 1298.70. It'll change, uh, uh, give or take, depending on price action out here. But 12, let's just call it 1299 is a number that uh, would then suggest that, okay, gold has bottomed on a short-term time frame chart while coming back to support uh, from both the daily and the weekly time frame out there. I hope that helps you out, Peter, with regard to what it is that I'm looking at for uh, gold. Um, nothing else that I can report on. For those of you that would like me to report on how gold or anything is doing in other currencies, I wish I could, but I can't. If you're watching me on Tiger TV, you can see in the center section here, I got Euro USD and Great British Pound and Japanese Yen, and then I've got basically 30 or 40 other currencies on my currency sheet. And you'll see they all have little red squares there. What's that mean? That means these signals had problems since last night that they have not been able to resolve, and it's all in the currency market. So I've kind of got my hands tied behind my back, and never a great feeling out there. Okay, so that's that's Goldilocks with regard to what it's doing. And uh, look, there would be a change in trend if we see a close below the uh, daily and the weekly profile out there. Okay, uh, what do we want to move on to next? Peter was asking if we go take a look at the ES Mini. And the answer is we absolutely can. So let's start by going longer term to shorter term. All right, Peter? Uh, good with you, good with me. If we take a look at the weekly time frame out here, what we're going to notice is there is no topping pattern. The weekly chart for the ES Mini says the ES Mini is going to go tag its all-time highs. In other words, if we cut out all the noise of yesterday and the day before and so on and so forth, we would look at this chart, and here are the things that we would know on a weekly basis. We would know that it formed that TD setup nine count. It actually, the high was the week following, which is March 22nd. When we got that shooting star, uh, the shooting stars either work or they don't. It didn't work. I mean, you have follow through the next week, the week after. We didn't. We are above that shooting star. That would be, in essence, a resistance level. Uh, we are above Stevie's green line out here. We're trading at 28.91. The weekly chart says that the ES Mini wants to go make that all-time high and maybe even higher. That's what the weekly chart shows us. We come back, we'll go look at the daily and a few other charts, but I would love to hear from you. 877-927-6648 or Steve at TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, right now, we've got the uh, Dow trading. Well, most of the indices, actually a mixed market out here. Uh, Dow's off about 37 points. S&P, pretty close to the flat line out here. And uh, we're taking a look at the ES Mini as a request for one of our uh, dinners out here. Now, what we're going to do is we had looked at the weekly time frame. And the weekly time frame suggested that price wants to move to higher ground. So we were looking at uh, my... Uh, my ninja trader chart and and we came to that conclusion because we saw that price was above some resistance levels now the weekly time frame chart here for the es mini is in the right hand corner and what we can also see here with regard to the weekly time frame is price is above the top of its profile which is 28 22 50. so the 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 weekly time frame is is uh um, is clear with regard to what it wants to do. However, it doesn't have a quorum. Uh, you know, it, 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 all cylinders, have, well, not all cylinders have to be firing, but it does make for a smoother drive. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, we'll see that two days ago uh, we got to that uh, nine count. Uh, we have not taken out that high, so it still is in effect out here. And we have two competing patterns. Either that's a topping pattern or short-term topping pattern, or, excuse me, there's an A to B equals CD to the upside. Next price projection around 29.29 to 29.66 out there. Now when we come back here and we take a look at the daily time frame, and this way we're going to go ahead and combine the daily, the monthly, which is below that on the left, and then the quarterly time frames out here. And here is what we know, which is that price is trading into a resistance area. Three days ago, uh, there was a brand new daily profile that formed. The top of that box is 2900 um, The top of the monthly box is 2892 
and the top of the quarterly box is 28.85. Granted, we're slightly above that, five points or so, uh, give or take. Um, we're not above the monthly at 28.92. So what you can see, and, and at the tops of these boxes, just think of it like this. This is the market providing you with information for these time frames to let you know where buyers and sellers are. Sellers are going to be at the top of the pro profile resistance. Buyers are going to be at the bottom of the profile. And then depending upon where that center line um, lines up, it'll help us understand is that box predominantly full of buyers or sellers. Yeah, it's basically about as clear as I can get here. So what do we know about the ES Mini? Well, we know that it's up at resistance. What about the S&P 500? If we just simply go take a look at it. So let me pull that chart over here. We're just trying to identify what's the message of the markets. And then we'll summarize this. Uh, here we can see that uh, the eight count from four days ago, the you know, is so far the high. Prices inside the ES Mini, I'm sorry, inside the S&P cash indice on a daily basis. Below Stevie's green line, we can see that because the black number of where price is trading at 28.86 is below the green one behind it. So we know that it is below Stevie's green line out here. Um, is there any other topping pattern or signal for the ES Mini, the S&P 500? No. We've looked at, well, we I suppose there could be, but I think we've looked at the ones that uh, you and I like to use to identify tops and bottoms. So the market is at a place, if in fact there was going to, if sellers were going to show up, this is it. This is the price range they're at. That doesn't mean they have to show up at 122 in the afternoon. It just means that it's going to be very difficult for the ES Mini to get above these levels. Aha! Also, if the ES Mini is able to get above these levels, and maybe it's the weekly chart that is the correct chart, then what we should see is a test of those highs. But what the monthly chart here shows us is that not only could it test the highs, that's the September level, that price point was, by the way, 29.55. Uh, what we might actually see is um, is a uh, is is more of a move up to that rising trend line, which is in the 3,000 level out here. So that's what's going on inside the ES Mini multiple time frames out there, Peter. I hope that that helps you out. We had a question that came in. Another question. This one is from. Let's go see who it's from. From James, JJ. James writes in and he says, um, what would be a good entry point on WBA? That is Walgreens Boots Alliance out there. Well, let's go take a look at Walgreens Boots Alliance. And let's look at their three time frames. So here's what we know, James. First of all, on the daily time frame chart, there was a new profile that formed a few days ago. The bottom of that box, which should be support, support can become resistance. It's resistance now. There is no doubt about it. It's been tested in essence the last three days out here. That is 54.88. Wide ranging bar that took out the bottom of the weekly profile. So that certainly is bearish. At least we take a look at this. And price has also taken out the bottom of the monthly profile. Those were 60.89 and 61.23 respectively. So that ain't looking so good. Uh, I will just change this just for the heck of it. Let's move to the quarterly time frame. And price is also below the quarterly time frame on Walgreens Boots Alliance. This says you may have some time here before a Walgreens Boots Alliance has actually made a bottom. But Let's go see what it actually has done as well. So one of the patterns that you and I also like to pay attention to, certainly from a, at least a measurement standpoint, would be the A to B equals CD pattern out here. So the A point is clearly up on December 4th. The uh, B point of this pattern is down on December 26th. The retracement or the C point was February 19th. And what we can see is this did a 47% retracement. And price is near the one-to-one -one level at 53.14. Pretty good chance that price is going to exceed the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. Pretty good chance. Doesn't mean that it will, uh, you know, guaranteed, but uh, at this stage here, that's really what I would be looking at. That's what I would be going with, uh, so to speak. The only thing that could change that uh, would be, well, let me change charts because uh, I can't show you. Now I can show you. Come on up. So the other thing, so we know we're close to the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. 
What we also know is it's possible because prices stretching the rubber band is pushing lower doing less relative energy. You would need to see a bullish reversal candle James show up here. You need to see a close above Stevie's red line. Wouldn't be tough to do. That's 54.86. Get back in the profile. I would say at this stage, the way things look, really to prove itself, you would need to see this close above the top of the daily box out there, 56.93, especially with these gaps and everything that are in play out here. So you asked specifically, what's a good entry price? I don't think that that good entry price has established itself just yet. And I don't really think that I can, not, not, not only do I not really think, I know I can't give you a price point right now because there's no level of support uh, that I could say, here's where the target is, James. So I think what you need to do is just simply be careful out here, uh, especially with price being below the monthly and the quarterly bottom of those profiles. Those are really good indications that, you know, a change in trend had taken place. Now, in the case of Walgreens Boots, that uh, closed below the bottom of the monthly profile. It occurred quite a while ago, but there's a new profile, and it is below that, too. So thanks for writing in. Uh, I hope that helps you out. It basically says uh, keep watching the chart. But keep those hands. Keep that powder dry. Maybe you can find a better place to use it than Walgreens, Boots, Alliance. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back. Uh, Dow down 44, S&P up too. Let's uh, take a uh, spin around the the uh, U.S. Uh, indices out here and uh, see what the message of each of these are. So let's do that instead of spending time here in the equity futures contract. If we're, we're the first place we're starting here is the Nasdaq Composite. Uh, we can see prices moving higher, doing less relative energy out there. Um, the high today, just curious, the high today, 79.75. The high yesterday, 79.65. So that kind of eliminates the uh, TD setup nine count out there. Uh, but prices moving higher, doing less relative energy. Uh, no bearish reversal signal yet. Could be. Price is just sitting on Stevie's green line. So just uh, testing support. But a close, I would say, below 79.22.73, that would go ahead and generate a signal to tell you there is some type of retracement that's going to take place inside the NASDAQ composite. It's not there yet, but it, that would be the number. I would write that down on a pad of paper and be paying attention to that at the end of the day's session. Inside the semiconductor industry, uh, there is a, a nine count that is in play. Uh, we can't see prices moving higher, doing less relative energy, but price still only testing Stevie's green line in the 1472 level out there. Potential for a top? Uh, what would it take? I'd say a close. Uh, I'd just simply use a close below yesterday's open of 1465. That could spell trouble, short-term trouble in River City. Not there yet, but certainly a warning or caution sign um, that says uh, make sure you're swimming with a life vest out there because there's some undertow. If we take a look at the uh, Dow Jones transports, damn. If the transports are going to give us a signal that the markets are going to turn, it ain't here. Other than, I guess it is trading into this gap to the downside, which is up at the 10,774 level, although we're trading inside that gap. Uh, that would say the low would be 10,814, so we're not up there. Uh, it looks like what the uh, transports are doing is heading, uh, well, they're heading higher. I don't see a topping pattern in place here as we speak right now that's the trannies out there if we take a look at the uh da, 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 the wilshire wilshire 5000 currently in wave number seven that's letter number g on my screen out here that can be a topping pattern and signal um price is trading just underneath stevie's green line uh, i would have to see a close below yesterday's low inside the wilshire five i'm sorry yesterday yeah yesterday's low uh, which would be 29711 would be uh, something to take a look at. I did look at the semis, but Peter, uh, you were sleeping at the switch. You were you were watching the snowfall out there in Park City. Here's what we were looking at when we were looking at the uh, semiconductor index out here. Uh, both a, a TD setup nine count, price moving higher, roads momentum indicator signal, but no confirmation, no completion just yet, and price trading above Stevie's green line. So support is held topping signals out here, but no pattern yet that has formed. I hope that helps you out. So that's uh, the semis. Uh, we didn't take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. We take a look at the NYSE. Uh, this uh, actually has generated nothing. I, I take that back. Uh, the actual high was on bar number eight. No, no problem. Uh, it was on bar number eight. The price is trading below Stevie's green line at 12000 and uh, 902, 12902, yeah, 12902 is the uh, number out here. So it's uh, showing signs of a top. But if that's the case, what we should see out here is we should see the advanced decline oscillator below zero. And if we put that up on the screen as we speak at 134 in the afternoon, that is not the case. It is above zero. So uh, no confirmed top for the NYSE. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, the NDX, well, we've got the TD setup nine count. Um, uh, with today being a higher high, so the bar after bar nine. Price also moving higher, doing less relative energy. It closed below yesterday's. Let's just use the open of 75.81, which suggests that uh, we're going to see a retracement out here. But that's what you need. You don't have it yet. So, therefore, the market remains bullish. If we look at the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000, this had formed its top um, quite a while ago, back here on bar number nine, which was looks like it was on 
February 25th. Um, so then that top still is in place, although what we know is that we just really have a, a sideways-ish type moving market in the Russell 2000. Um, the Russell 2000, best thing for us to utilize for it would be its market profiles at this stage of the game to help us identify where price is headed to. And if we pull open this chart here, we're going to see that that price level would be 1607, as long as price remains above 157770. Let's finish this off by taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average out here. Here's what we're going to see. Uh, this actually has confirmed a top. How? Price was moving higher, doing less relative energy. And then on the trading day of uh, March the uh, April the 8th out there, March, April the 8th, we had a gap to the downside. That's the bearish reversal signal. Now what price is doing is continuing to trade below Stevie's Green Line at 26.268 out there. However, we have to default back here to say uh, we have to add answer the question, has support broken? And to do that, what you and I will do is we'll just simply rely upon the daily market profile. And that number is 26017. We're at 26108. A close below 26017 would confirm that there's at least a short-term change in trend in place for the Dow. So the Dow cash indice generated a topping signal. The confirmation would be a level of support failing. In this case here, we're going to say that failure would be a close below the bottom of its daily profile. Uh, so if we take a look at so if we take a look at the S&P just to go ahead and close this out, what do we have out here? We've got a, a TD setup uh, nine count. It was bar number eight four bars ago that identified a potential of a top price is trading below Stevie's green line, uh, and so this too says there's a possibility now. In order for that possibility to come to fruition, you would need to see the ES Mini close below 2860. 2860, that is about 30 points, uh, 28 points away from where we're trading right now. But you would not get a confirmation of that pattern that we just looked at until you were to see a level of support broken, fail. When I say broken, I don't mean just move below it. I mean stay below it. So what's the summary here? There are topping signals, a couple of them that are confirmed. But those confirmed, such as the Dow, uh, such as the, uh, what else, uh, the Russell 2000, um, have not broken levels of support. And therefore, the trend that is in place, which is a bullish trend, remains in place at this moment. If we go take a look at shorter-term time frames, let's go do that. By shorter-term time frames, we can just go ahead and pull up this chart here. And here we've got the 30-minute time frame charts for the four equity futures contracts out here. Interestingly enough, the uh, Dow equity futures contract continues to find support at its apogee apogee pivot point at 26097 and the other indices out here equity futures contracts they're really not, sh not they're not really they're not showing us lower highs and lower lows i hope that helps you out steve rhodes with tfnm will be right back if you're in the cd market and looking for a secure investment the tiger first mortgage program may work for you the security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So crude oil down by about a buck. Let's go take a look at its chart patterns. Uh, start here with the daily time frame. And uh, what you and I can identify is that two sessions ago, uh, it was at uh, TD setup nine count that identified the current top. Price is pulled back and is testing Stevie's green line. That's at 63.48. We're trading at 63.48. So thus far, at least as 142 in the afternoon, light speed crude is testing support. No big deal out here. What happens if there's a close below that? And again, we'll use that as 63.48 would be the number, but you can give it a couple of pennies out there. So a close below Stevie's green line says there's more of a retracement in play, not that there's a change in trend. So when we switch over, we take a look at the daily time frame chart, which has both the daily and the uh, weekly profiles on it. Uh, what we're going to see is that there's a brand new box that formed today. And so uh, the top of that box is 64.79. Not really that far away from the top of the weekly profile, which was 65.40, which was and still is in essence the target. But now, again, you got this is the area where you've got sellers, 64.79 to 65.40. Um, let's not worry about that 60 cents out there. Um, well, I mean, you can worry about it if you want, but I'm just saying, you know, here's where the snipers are. Therefore, the price closes below Stevie's green line, that 63.48 level, where we're trading right now. What you would anticipate is a move back to 61.92. Now, what we know is that in the case of light sweet crude, since the bottom back here on December 26, we haven't seen a close below the bottom of the profile, with the exception of the days from February 7th, 8th, and 11th out there. But even though price had pulled back below the bottom of the daily profile, it helped us to understand where was the bottom of the weekly profile. And that is what is in place right now. That was 52.34. What you'll notice, because uh, you'll see that there's no middle line there. And that middle line backer happens to be right there at the bottom of the box. So you've got really strong support at 52.34. That held. Here's what we're saying is that if there were to so anticipate, it would appear, it looks, price is at support, one level of support. Stevie's oscillator on change line. You pull back below that, close below that, I should say, anticipate it move back to 61.92. No problem. 
as long as 6192 holds. This is a bullish structured box, the current one. 6192 is the bottom, 6224 is the center, 6479 is the top. I have no idea whether or not that will hold 6192. What I do know is that if it does not hold, then you would have a change in trend signal for light sweet crude. So what do you do? Hey, we know we've got a short-term topping pattern. Uh, that was that uh, TD setup nine count that you and I looked at. We know we're up near resistance, both on a daily and a weekly set of profiles. You got to anticipate that price is going to pull back to 61.92. Now you don't have to. I would. That just seems to be the message of the markets. But should you exit your long position? I, I don't see that. I would want to see a close below support because otherwise it's just a normal retracement back to support. And that's what Stevie sees when he pulls up the charts for light sweet crude. We don't have to look at the 60, the 120, and the 240 minute uh, date out here. Other than what I can share with you is price of below support there, which then adds to the thought process that maybe Stevie's green line is going to fail to hold. Hasn't failed yet, but maybe it's going to fail out there. That's what we see when we take a look at the charts for light, sweet, crude. What do we want to look at uh, next, uh, fans? Um, let's look at something that's moving higher. Can we do that? Let's look at Google. Let's go take a look at Google, see what it's doing. G-O-O-G. And by doing that, we're going to look at the daily... We're going to look at the weekly, and we're going to look at the monthly profile. So daily right in the resistance, top of the box, 1204. Uh, the 1217 levels, the top of the weekly profile. So those are resistance levels that if price can clear that, close above that, uh, what that says, now we'd really use 1217.21 as the key number, the weekly profile. Close above that, then you're all the way back to the highs, or run up to the highs which would be from July of 2018, and that's in the 1273 level. Nothing has fallen apart here inside of Google. I don't see any topping signals on my other charts uh, that I use. So there's no reason for me to pull those over here. What else do we want to uh, look at? Let's switch. Let's go look at something moving to the downside. ICPT out here, Intercept Pharmaceuticals, ICPT. Let's go see what it is doing and where it is headed to because it's traded lower. Um, and it's got volume behind the move, a gap lower. It is trading back inside its daily profile. This would suggest 92.63 to 96.99. The weekly profile out here, and by the way, yesterday, inside of Intercept Pharmaceuticals was what? A TD setup nine count. Now, you got to admit out here, or you don't have to admit, I'm going to admit, it blows my mind. How easy can it be? to at least be aware when these pat when this count shows up to pay attention it works more times than not out here now the danger the problem with intercept pharmaceuticals you can see it's below where that nine count pattern began forming that's that red solid line out there so that is not a good signal of course that's really just confirming what you and i just looked at with regard to profiles out there so from a daily standpoint do we see some kind of bottom or support we do it's just much lower than where price is trading right now so i would anticipate that uh, price is moving to the 9189 to 9263 level inside of intercept pharmaceuticals below that then you're looking in the 60s but let's just take things one step at a time and one step at a time shows you the resistance level on a monthly basis at the 11871 level Basically, in essence, where you were yesterday, even though it was just slightly above that, but you had your nine count out there. So that's what's going on with Intercept Pharmaceuticals. Let's look at uh, what do we have really moving to the upside that's not an IPO. What is Tuffin? Tuffin Software. No, nope, that's an IPO today. So uh, don't be buying it. Don't be buying that. Don't be buying Pager Duty. Having a nice move out here. Uh, it'll be down to revisit its lows or maybe take those out. Don't buy into it. We talked about this. The, don't, don't do it. The odds favor IPOs are going to eventually get back and at least test the lows, if not bust them out. Why? Well, IPOs, entities, have basically had nothing but buyers all along. So on their day-to-day -day view, it's all about
buyers, so to speak. It's all about pushing everything you can out there to make it look nice and shiny. Like a beautiful, you know, you got that new car smell. Eh, if you buy an IPO on day one, that new car smell can get kind of ranky relatively quick out here. So don't do it. But let's go take a look at something that isn't an IPO that we can try to figure out. Let's go take a look at Domino's Pizza, see if there's anything there. DPZ is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's go see where it's trading in relationship to profiles. Looks good on daily. Resistance at 260.237 on the uh, weekly. And uh, it's got a, a bullish structured monthly chart that uh, could push it up to the 296.61 level, which was uh, resistance from two months ago out there. Uh, Domino's Pizza, I don't think it moves higher until it can clear the high from uh, March 30th, 260.51. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So Art wants to take a look at um, gasoline futures out here. And our gasoline future, the chart looks similar, not the same but similar to what we were looking at for light speed crude. What I mean by that is there's no new daily profile, but the uh, price target here was the top of its weekly profile, and that's at 2.0859. The actual high from yesterday was uh, 2.07. So 
Um, you're basically there. Now, today's candle session is an inside bar, meaning prices traded with inside yesterday's bar from high to low. So there's no real signal here. An inside bar, the typical way that you um, uh, translate that is that it means that the existing trend that's in place should continue. If that's the case, that says they're probably going to go test the 2.08 level out there. And then above that, well, shoot, you could run all the way up to 235, all the way back to the highs from October 3rd. But here's what we know at 155 in the afternoon. prices up against resistance out here. Any pullback could take price down to 191. That's the top of the daily profile. If that's going to happen, what I would watch is this uh, four-hour time frame, 240-minute, 2.0165. Uh, that is a bullish structured box. It just formed over the past uh, eight, ten hours, something like that. And if price closes below that, the current session will close at the um, in two o'clock. Okay, I'm just trying to do my math. My abacus is not in front of me, and so I just kind of had a brain contusion there. Uh, so uh, 2 p.m. Now, look, if it doesn't close below at 2 p.m., that doesn't mean you're out of the woods. doesn't mean support held, um, but it closed below that at any point in time. Uh, that next, uh, so would suggest that you've got lower price coming at you. That's what I'd be looking at. That is not the message now that you've got lower price. You've got an inside day. So, folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear. He is the uh, favorite polar bear of even all the polar bears in Antarctica. That's because uh, those polar bears, because of global warming, uh, they're uh, getting a suntan out there. Not true. But stay tuned. David White, Tom O'Brien up next. I'll see you on fabulous, fantastic Friday. Have a great day.